Good afternoon, boys and girls. I'm Tanya Arneson, Senior Pastor of Jackson First United Methodist Church, and this is Children's Story Time for Monday, August the 31st, 2020. We've been reading through the whole story uh, based on the Bible, and now we're coming to the last days of Jesus' time on earth. This one is called A Dark Night in the Garden, and I want you to notice here that this is Jesus' disciples, and they're sleeping. And over here, you see in the background, there is Jesus in prayer to his heavenly Father. The wind was picking up now, blowing clouds across the moon, shrouding the garden in darkness. Stay up with me, Jesus asked his friends. They said yes and waited under the olive trees, but they were tired, and soon they fell asleep. Jesus walked ahead alone into the dark. He needed to talk to his heavenly father. He knew it was time for him to die. They had planned it long ago, he and his father. Jesus was going to take the punishment for all the wrong things anybody had ever done or ever would do. Papa, father, Jesus cried, and he fell on the ground. Is there any other way to get your children back, to heal their hearts, to get rid of the poison? But Jesus knew there was no other way. All the poison of sin was going to have to go into his own heart. God was going to pour into Jesus' heart all the sadness and brokenness in people's hearts. He was going to pour into Jesus' body all the sickness in people's bodies. God was going to have to blame his son for everything that had gone wrong. It would crush Jesus. Oh, this is so very sad. And here he is, bowing down before God, his heavenly father in the garden. But there was something else, something even more horrible. When people ran away from God, they lost God. It was what happened when they ran away. Not being close to God was like a punishment. Jesus was going to have to take that punishment. Jesus knew what that meant. He was going to lose his father, and that, Jesus knew, would break his heart into. A violent sob shook Jesus' whole body. Then Jesus was quiet, and like a lamb, he said, I trust you, Papa. Whatever you say, I will do. And now we see there's Jesus waiting with his disciples. And look, there's a whole army of soldiers coming to get him. Suddenly through the trees, a glitter of starlight flashed off steel. Into the quiet garden came whispered, muffled voices, clanking metal and the sound of boots marching. Jesus stood up. He woke his friends. Now is the time, he said gently. Everything that was written about me, what God has been telling his people all through the long years, it's all coming true. And into the night, with burning torches and lanterns, with swords and clubs and armor, they came, an army of soldiers. Judas led them straight to Jesus so they could arrest him. Jesus was waiting for them. And here we've got Peter. Peter leapt up, took a sword, and tried to defend Jesus. He sliced off a guard's ear. Jesus immediately touched the guard and healed him. Peter, he said, this is not the way. Peter didn't realize that no army, no matter how big, could ever arrest Jesus, not unless Jesus let them. Then Jesus, who had never done anything except love people, was arrested as if he were a criminal. Jesus' friends were afraid. So they ran away and hid in the dark shadows. And here's the guards with Jesus. The guards marched Jesus off and took him to the leaders. You remember the leaders 
who hated Jesus so much. The leaders put Jesus on trial. Are you the son of God, they asked. I am, Jesus said. Who do you think you are to call yourself God? You must die for calling yourself the son of God. Only the Romans were allowed to kill prisoners. So the leaders made a plan. We'll tell the Romans. This man wants to be our king and then they will crucify him. But it would be all right. It was God's plan. It was for this reason that I was born into the world, Jesus said. Oh my, so very sad, isn't it? But instead of remembering all of the sadness or only the sadness, boys and girls, I hope you will remember with gladness that Jesus did all of this because he loves us, because he loves the world so very much. And so instead of being thankful, instead of being sad, I hope you'll be thankful. Thankful that you are so loved by Jesus. I hope to see you again on Thursday when we will talk about the sun that stops shining. Finally, Jesus is put to death. In the meantime, please be blessed and be well. And I hope you have a good week in school. And to know that you are beloved by God and that your pastor loves you too. Bye-bye.